Jeremy, that's a challenge. Wait, back up. Wait. You go, you're, you're like, right, forward, 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 just go around the obstacles. Just go around the obstacles. Good morning. Levi is person. Whoa. Whoa. 
Levi is person A. Lydia, scoot over. I'm just sitting too. Lydia is person B. Everybody say hello, Lydia. Hello, Lydia. Again, not like you hate Lydia. Say it again. Hi, Lydia. Uh, okay, in their hands, there are different combinations that are just beautiful combinations. Okay, right? So I'm going to blindly. And our first combination is Chips and Thunder! Delicious! Delicious? Well, yeah, loud, okay? So. I love the first. You love their Chips and Thunder. Yes. Beautiful, me too. Chips. This is what this is what the French call chips, okay? In America, the British. The British. I don't know my stuff. Okay. So the French probably call them fries. Someone did not set me up for success on that one. So chips and thunder, fries and thunder, whatever you want to call. It's a cool combination. Who likes thunder? Who likes chips? Slash French fries. Perfect. You love chips and thunder. You would love shoe roll. Oh, get it? You know, like how you take your shoes off and you throw them, like kind of roll. Like who leaves their shoes all over the place? Yeah, that's me. So like, obviously, you would be like, okay, um, it's the end of the day. It's gonna have school. And suddenly you have football, and you take your shoe off and it rolls. See that's a shoe roll. Thank you. I'm gonna leave that out. Next, we have rock strikes. Yeah, yeah, rock strikes. So you are like, I love rock strikes. I have no idea what rock strikes are. So if you like rock strikes, they're rocks. They're rocks. Okay. They're rocks of strikes. Okay. What else do we have? Person A, we have one. Person B, we have. We have an alliteration up here. Stars. F. Stars. And Peppa. Who and Peppa. Not that one. Peppa. Not that one. Have you ever had pepper before and it's like, ooh, no, love pepper? And yeah. it's like stars blowing up in your face? That's star pepper, okay? Yeah. Let's go last one. We have, ooh, upside, upside down lightning. That's my side. Lightning map! <laughs> um, it's here for the map. So, <laughs> or Mac Lightning, whatever you choose. That's my wrestler. It's like cheese and Mac or Mac and cheese. We just don't know. It's Lightning Mac, Mac and Lightning. We just don't know. Um, so what a Lightning Mac is, is um, <laughs> it's a computer that only has outlets or plugins for Lightning. Okay, so it makes sense. But when we get to Mac Lightning, it says that Chick Fil A, that Chick Fil A Mac and Cheese that just is like puts all other Mac and Cheese to like. It's like that's a good mac and cheese, like the grandma mac and cheese that makes a Thanksgiving lunch. Mm. Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Haley's like, I know exactly what you're talking about. I like Everybody, that. I'm done with the combinations. Like okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, don't be just sit down. Give Levi and Lydia a hand. Levi, Levi. You know what? Okay. So, fifth the rest of the theme. I'm just going to take my shoes off. Don't do that. Please don't do that. I'm not going to play it. Lydia, or uh, Marcia, uh, Isabel was low key scared, like, oh goodness, he's about to throw a shoe at me. <laughs> no, so, so, how many of y'all were like really confused and all that? Yeah. Like, Mac Lightning and that stuff, uh, like, Thunder and Chip, that's absolutely amazing. See, when we talked about, when we were like talking about combinations, like, what would be the combination for Mac and Cheese, Cheese. Pepper and Salt? Rock and oh. perfect. See, these combinations, like we expect those to be what's going to come, but they weren't, right? So we were left confused. See, sometimes life, too, we have these different expectations for life, and sometimes it's not what we thought was going to happen, right? For some, it's our sport, right? How many of y'all ever uh, play a sport, right? Um, so I actually hung out with the cross country team, Central Carrollton Bremen this past week, and they're running at Carrollton's cross-country course, which is a really hard cross-country course. And I was talking with some of the runners after, it was like, man, I did not expect that. Because they've been training, they've been running three, four miles in this two-mile course, like, man, this doesn't seem that big of a deal. But it was a really hard course. There are some people who walked half the course, there are some people who just looked like they had a miserable time the entire time, like Carson. <laughs> Carson's like, that's me. But sometimes life, 
bring stuff that we don't expect. And sometimes it can be the school too, right? When whose favorite subject is math? I have 100. I like Good job, Gracie. I like I know, right? And I have 100. You like lunch better? Whose favorite good. subject is lunch? Me! <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not in school. <laughs> but anyway, so, so it was like, my favorite subject was math in, in school. Um, I wasn't very good at literature. Like, and I remember specifically, and I'm going to share something that's kind of embarrassing. Don't judge, or I'll fight you. I won't fight you. I'll just, I'll just tell your parents on you, and I know a lot of your parents. I'll fight you. I was not expecting that. Anyway, see just what I mean. I was in literature one day, and I'm a math like two plus two makes more sense than spelling a word, right? Yes. And I remember sitting in a spelling test one day, and I was so confident in myself, and then we get to the spelling test, and I couldn't spell a word. And I broke down crying in the middle of my second grade class because I couldn't spell the word was. W-A-S. Okay, that's a silly illustration, but sometimes we go into school and we're like, man, we know math, we know literature, we know science, and we just completely bomb a test, right? Has ever failed a test before? No, never in my life. Never in my life. You guys are liars. How many of you are liars? Exactly. See, <laughs> but in life, in general, there's just some things, there's some things that happen that we don't expect. And in those times, it's kind of hard to trust God in those moments, right? Like when someone we love gets sick. For some of us, um, we have parents who aren't together anymore. Some of us have lost a best friend. And it's kind of hard to trust. God in those moments, because it's not what we expect, and we have different questions, and we're actually going to look at a guy, and we've been looking at Joseph the past couple weeks, right, and Joseph was the youngest of how many brothers? Twelve. Twelve, Twelve right? He has eleven brothers. How many of y'all have siblings? How many of y'all have 11, 11 siblings? Exactly. How many of y'all are like, my one sibling's enough? Technically, we all have eleven brothers, if you think about it. But imagine eleven brothers. And some of you girls in the room who are just like brothers and si or have sisters, like, oh my gosh. I have six brothers. I have two brothers. Yes, six brothers. That's crazy. But anyway, yes, last week, last week we looked at where Jacob's, or um, Joseph's brothers, actually so, sold Joseph in slavery, right? Yes. And he actually became one of the chief uh, officials in Pharaoh's court. And we're actually going to look at a little bit about. Um, oh, well, Oh, hey Tyler. What's up? Well, what are you doing? I'm trying to teach what happened oh. to Joseph in Egypt. This is one of my favorite stories. Can I, can I help you tell? I guess. Okay. If I say hello, Tyler, and not like you hate him. Hello. I said not like you hate him. Hello, hello Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey Tyler. Tyler is back. Deserves more. Okay, so anyway, Joseph actually became um, a helper in this guy's um, house named Potiphar. He was like a chief official in Potiphar's house. And to demonstrate, this is a hat. <laughs> it's like a captain, someone who's not official. So, Joseph was sold into the house of a man named Potiphar, who was the captain of the guard. And not sure what kind of captain he was, but he probably wasn't like a pirate, like this hat um, demonstrates. But anyway, they live in the desert. There probably weren't any boats. Do you know where Egypt's at? Yeah. It's in Africa. There's a river. There's a river. Wait. But not a lot of boats. Anyway. So, Joseph lived in Potiphar's house. And since God was with Joseph, God gave Joseph a lot of success. Oh. oh let's see. What's it? <laughs> it doesn't really say Joseph, but let's pretend it says Joseph. Joseph. See? Joseph. Had. Get it? Oh, gosh. That's a little. Oh, it's a snapback. Oh, hold on. We're about to get cool in here. Ready, guys? Yep. I can't handle the coolness. <laughs> oh, that was, wow. yeah. But anyway, so Joseph is living in this captain's house, and is to show your success. God gave Joseph success because Joseph was with God, and God was with Joseph. So Potiphar, captain's hat, saw that the Lord was with Joseph, and Joseph was very successful in everything he did. 
This made Potiphar very happy. <laughs> very happy. You're not uncomfortable at all. <laughs> so he put Joseph. I need my Joseph hat. This is Potiphar. No, Potiphar was a captain. This is Joseph. We'll go with that. That's Joseph. In charge of his house and trusted Joseph to take care of everything. So Joseph was in charge of everything in Potiphar's house because Joseph was very successful in everything he did, and Potiphar saw that Joseph had God with him, so he gave Joseph more responsibility. From that time on, the Lord blessed Potiphar's house and household, and because of Joseph, Joseph did a great job, and Potiphar didn't have a care in the world. Yet it tells <coughs> Joseph's boss. So, pretty soon, Potiphar had a wife. And do we know what Potiphar's wife's name? No, Potiphar had a wife. And she saw Joseph. And she noticed Joseph. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> Come on, You get a very beautiful woman. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Potiphar's wife. Woo! Potiphar's wife. Gorgeous. So Potiphar's wife. Yes, that, that's Potiphar's wife actually began to test Joseph. Oh gosh, here's your test. Uh, standardized yeah. test. Get it? Okay. So, do you notice how successful he was? She began to test her. And it's not this kind of test, but she she told Potiphar that thing, uh, to make things difficult for Joseph. And day after day, she would say, she would make every, don't take pictures of me. <laughs> a very distracting time. <laughs> So, the Potiphar's wife was like, hey, Potiphar, make things difficult for Joseph. And again, it wasn't like this kind of test. It was like, make him do really hard work. Make him do this. Make him do that. Make his life very uncomfortable. But all these tests, and this hair is getting in my mouth. All these, <laughs> all these tests, Joseph was becoming very successful in it. Joseph was accomplishing the test. He was passing the test. And Potiphar's wife actually got super, super frustrated. So Potiphar's wife decided to tell Potiphar that Joseph. Potiphar's wife is furious. Potiphar, got it. <laughs> so, so Potiphar's wife told Potiphar, remember this guy that Joseph is living with, this guy that Joseph is actually under, that Joseph did some actually very awful things to Potiphar, or Potiphar's wife. And it wasn't very true. So word got out, Potiphar got frustrated, Joseph got out of town, and Joseph didn't do anything wrong, oh gosh. but Potiphar was after him. It's like, you can't do that to my wife, you can't say these things, you can't do these things. So Joseph just decides to leave town. And again, just like we found him in that hole last week, right? After his brother sold him into slavery, he's in this hole all by him. So he's alone. And again, he finds himself alone again. Ooh, look at this. Oh gosh, I'm not singing this. You sing very well. We've all heard how well you sing. Yeah, yeah. We have. We have. We have. We have. We have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ready? Yes. Ready for this? Hold on. Are you sure? I need to in yeah. channel my inner Celine Dion. Okay. Okay. All by myself. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's no recovery for that. <laughs> so Joseph actually ends up in jail. He's all by himself. And the Lord was still with him. And just like in Potiphar's house, the head of the jail, this officer, huh? So because Joseph is living this life, this extraordinary life, even though he's in prison, even though he's all by himself, the prison guard actually notices that God was with Joseph. Here's the keys to the prison, young man. Thank you. So the prison guard actually showed kindness to Joseph, released him, and he actually made Joseph the head of the jail. So sometime later, the prison got two new prisoners. The first was a king's baker who loves cupcakes. Oh. Oh. So, guess what I had for breakfast yesterday? Um, uh, for breakfast yesterday, I had a cupcake. Don't judge me. For dinner yesterday, 
I had three cupcakes. <laughs> Again, don't judge me. So yesterday, over the course of a day, I had four cupcakes. So the second prisoner was a cupbearer. Oh, oh gosh, this is like real glass. <laughs> I do not think this was a good idea for you to give me real glass. So since Joseph was in charge of the prison, and even though he was still a prisoner, he was also put in charge of the baker and cupbearer. So Joseph was asked to oversee the cupbearer and the baker. So one night, both the baker and cupbearer had awful dreams. And this isn't a dream like, like the fourth grade guys who are going to have a lock-in this Saturday. It's not like the next day when you're sleeping, like, oh, I had too much pizza, and you had like a really awful dream. No, these dreams were more like visions about something that was actually going to happen to the, both the cupbearer and the baker. So the next morning, Joseph saw that the cupbearer and the baker were very, very sad. Thank you. So he reached out to the cupbearer, like, hey, what's going on? And they told Joseph, we both had dreams, but there's nobody that can tell us what they mean. Joseph just had, oh, oh, had an idea. <laughs> My sticker. Oh, I'm gonna say. <laughs> so remember, why did Joseph become so influential in Pharaoh's life? Because he interpreted dreams. God gave Joseph the specific ability to interpret dreams. So maybe God could tell the cupbearer and the uh, the baker through Joseph what their dreams mean. So the cupbearer, remember, chalice, cup, I almost dropped that. The cupbearer told his first dream. He told the three branches on a vine that grew clusters of grapes. In the dream, the cupbearer then squeezed the grapes into Pharaoh's cup, and then he then put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Joseph, remember Joseph, told him the interpretation of the dream. He said that the three branches are three days, and then three days, Pharaoh would give the cupbearer his job back. He was getting out of prison, so the cupbearer was being free. He wasn't going to be in prison anymore. And Joseph was telling the, this through his dream. He was interpreting his dream. Joseph asked one thing. He said to the cupbearer, when everything is going well for you, remember me. Please speak to the Pharaoh and tell him about me and how I'm innocent. <laughs> But I'm stuck in this prison. So when you get out in three days, tell Pharaoh, who knows who I am, what I've been doing, everything that I've been doing. Oh, I'm not done. Don't get ahead of testing Joseph. Good job. So he's like, hey, I'm in prison. Let Pharaoh know about me. So now the baker, figure, I'm just going to do my hand. Uh, now the baker, a penny, a penny <laughs> give that in the offering. No. Now the baker saw that the cupbearer's dream would have positivity. He's like, oh, I had an awful dream. The cupbearer had an awful dream. Let's see if Joseph can interpret my dream. So Joseph told him, that, told him the interpretation as well. He said, sorry, I lost my spot. The baker told the dream of three baskets of bread on his head and how birds were eating the bread out of the baskets, which is just weird, right? How many of y'all have yeah. been to the beach and you drop like a chip before and there's like seagulls coming all around you? It's not a very fun sight. And this dude's dream is about the birds eating bread out of three baskets on his head, which is just a very weird sight in itself, right? So Joseph's like, okay. The three baskets were three, day, three days, just like the cupbearer's dream. But rather than getting out three days, the baker would be executed in three days. Fine. Oh, wow. Not very he good. Cupcakes. He made cupcakes. How dare you? Oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you ain't Joseph. The, oh, don't kill Joseph. Kill the baker. Ah! Now you have the job. Too soon. Too soon. Take off the hat. Three days later, after the dreams. Joseph's interpretations came true. The cupbearer was restored to his previous position, and the baker was toast. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Very clever. This is what we use as an analogy. <laughs> now, the third day happened to be Pharaoh's birthday, and the cupbearer was once again standing next to. Um, him in his dream. 
Now remember how Joseph was asked one simple thing from the cupbearer? He asked the cupbearer one thing. What was that? Tyler. To remember, right? Um, before we go any further, everybody give Tyler a big round of hands. <laughs> But when Pharaoh and the cupbearer are hanging out, the cupbearer didn't say anything about Joseph. And you're going to think, that's a tough position for Joseph to be in, isn't it? He's in jail for doing something he didn't do. He's interpreted dreams of a cupbearer and a baker that has came true. And he said, cupbearer, can you please tell Pharaoh who I am? Tell Pharaoh what I've done in your life, what God has done in our lives. And please remember me. And the cupbearer didn't do it. He didn't. He didn't. So imagine the situation that Joseph is in. That's a tough situation to be in, right? See, God has put Joseph in these different situations, and he's put him in different good situations, but now it's a very, very hard situation to be in. It would be hard for Joseph to trust God in that moment, wouldn't it? Let's make it a little bit more uh, personal, right? See, we're going to a new school, and our parents are talking about all the good things that are going to happen in this new school year, in this new class, and we sit by ourselves at lunch. We, um, we go into the school year thinking that we have all these new friends, our friends from last year are going to continue with us, but we're alone. Someone that we know is very sick, and we pray with them, we ask God to heal them, and it doesn't happen. It's kind of hard to trust God in those moments, isn't it? In those stories, in those narratives, in the story of Joseph. And we, we sometimes catch our catch ourselves thinking, like, if God was really with, with Joseph, shouldn't only good things happen to him? And if, that's a good question, right? Like, if God is a good God, why do bad things happen, right? That's a valid question. But I don't, I do know that there are times when bad stuff, ha bad stuff happens. Parents get divorced, friends move away, people pass away. And there are times where God allows us to feel pain. And heartbreak and loss. He let Joseph suffer. Suffer, not suffer, suffer. Mm -hmm. That would be a different story. <laughs> he let Jesus, his only son, feel more pain than we could ever feel. And Jesus didn't do anything wrong his entire life, did he? We won't know why all these bad things, we won't know <coughs> why these bad things happen all the time. And they won't make sense a lot of the time, either. But here's the thing. When bad things happen, we may be tempted to stop trusting God, right? Like parents are divorced, someone we know has passed away, we've lost our best friend. But the truth is, that's when we need to trust God the most. Because when we try to make, make sense of it ourselves, when we try to figure everything out, we're just going to make the situation worse. See, Joseph, we see that he is released from jail. And again, he goes into this uh, power, this position of influence, this position of power again in the, in the government. See, but Joseph didn't stop trusting God. When his brothers threw him in a well, sold him into slavery, he was in jail. He still had good hope. So a question that I want to ask you to <coughs> think about during your small group and it's a kind of a hard question, is when is it hard to trust God in your life? And I know not everybody goes through the same thing. Not everybody's family is the same. Everybody has a unique, different story. So there should be a unique answer to this. Is when is it hard for you to trust God? And before we go into any further, I want to read the memory verse. And... Just listen to these words. Trust the Lord with all your heart. How much of your heart? How much of it? Oh, not just a little bit. Not even just half of it. But all of it. Be all in. Have your heart surrendered to God. Do not depend on whose understanding? Us. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't depend on your own understanding. Trust in God. Don't trust in yourself. Because we're going to make the, uh, the waters muddy. We're going to make the situations worse. So trust in God, who is in complete control of every situation, who does allow pain and suffering to happen, and we may not know why, but we know that God is still a good God, right? That God is a God of blessing. He's a God of hope. He's a God of love. And yeah, we may be going through a difficult situation, but we know that our confident hope is in Jesus. Okay? Does anybody want to pray us out before we go into uh, worship? Did you want to pray? I'll get you my son. You got it? All right, let's pray. Yeah, Lord, I hope we have a good, good uh, worship time and hope we pray God to his time. Worship good. Amen. Amen. Amen.